Welcome. My name is Tobias Peil and I'm sitting here with Ahmed Karaoud, who agreed to foster our ENS network, regional network, and mission by becoming our expert correspondent in Tunisia. We're extremely happy that you agreed to support our work from your new post in Tunisia. I think it's fair to say that you are a legal authority not only for Tunisia but for the whole Middle East, especially when it comes to human rights, advocacy and promotion. Could you tell our viewers a little bit more about your expertise and professional experience? First of all, I, I would like to, to thank you for this opportunity to uh, speak with you about uh, the non-violence. Uh, and uh, I am a Tunisian. Uh, I uh, worked uh, for uh, more, uh, more than 20 years now with uh, Amnesty International as a field organizer uh, and uh, as uh, the head of the regional office uh, in Beirut. At the same time, uh, I am a member uh, in the Tunisian League of Human Rights uh, and also I participated with the other NGOs in the region, uh, mainly in the field of the advocacy for human rights. Thank you very much for the information, and I think it's pretty clear that, that we won the jackpot uh, with you as our correspondents in Tunisia after what you just said. And let me now ask you a question about Tunisia, uh, that is very much related to the work of right to nonviolence. Um, what do you think should be done to retain the predominantly nonviolent spirit of the revolution in the transitional phase and, of course, in the post revolutionary new society in Tunisia? I think uh, the experience of Tunisia is very interesting because uh, after five decades of uh, under uh, authoritarian and repressive regime, uh, we made a transition to democracy through a pacific and non-violent uh, means. Uh, already uh, we had thrown the tyrant Ben Ali, not through violence, but not through non-violence uh, uh, and pacific uh, uh, movement. This is the first. Uh, I think it's very interesting to, to keep uh, in mind this this uh, issue. Uh, we can uh, already uh, develop this methods or this way if we will succeed as people, uh, as uh, government, as uh, human rights movement as civil societies, uh, as uh, also private sector, uh, to deal with the uh, issues in the transitional uh, period with uh, some creativity. And also uh, we have uh, to, to deal with three or four issues mainly. Uh, first of all, it's about the past. We have to uh, make a, a real, uh, uh, a real, um, what's the kind call it, uh, exam or uh, to examine our past through human rights perspective, uh, not through revenge, but through uh, justice. Uh, the second uh, uh, issue is about the reforms kind of reforms in three uh, areas. First of all, it's about security. Second is about justice. Third, it's about education. I think we need uh, a deep transformation in these three uh, uh, areas if we would like really make a good uh, transitional democracy uh, transition. Uh, for sure, the, the political issue now would be uh, one of the main for the next uh, months, it's about the Constitution. Also, if we will succeed to put human rights in the heart of the, the Constitution, uh, we will, uh, I think, we will succeed uh, really. Uh, there are some discussions now about the uh, political governance. Uh, it will be parliamentary or presidential or mixed way. Uh, it's a good issue, it's a very interesting issue, but it's not, I, my point of view, the main issue is we will put human rights in the heart of the Constitution or not. 
we, we will give uh, the priority for the freedom of conscience, freedom of thinking, freedom of expression, or not. Because after that, we can uh, have uh, a lot of things based uh, on this and built on this uh, well, thank you very much uh, for, your, for your expertise and your time today. And I wish you all the best in Tunisia. Um, this is Tobias Payer from the Middle East Constitutional Forum in Beirut. Thank you very much.